welcome my name is Robert and this is part one of the series uh, about consciousness calibrations I started calibrating uh, in 2018 using Dr. Hawkins's technique but it took me a few months to learn the skill mainly because I didn't have uh, all the necessary information right from the beginning so in this video I will include all the basic information I would imagine you would need to start calibrating and also I will show you how I learned to calibrate on my own. If you are already calibrating then this video may help you to increase uh, your accuracy but if you don't calibrate yet then hopefully you will be able to learn it the same way I did. To recap in this video I will try to answer the following questions. What is consciousness calibrations? How to get a feel for calibrations? Methods of calibrations such as arm and bottle, o-ring and scissors method. At the end of the video I will mention some additional resources and where to get them, some of them for free. So what is consciousness calibration? In summary, the technique of uh, consciousness calibration or muscle testing is possible thanks to the capacity of the human physiology to recognize uh, the truth and the level of the truth. To learn how this is exactly possible, I would invite you to read the chapter 7 uh, titled The Physiology of Truth in the book True v Falsehood by Dr. David R. Hawkins. I will place the link in the description. In simplest terms, it means that the body can tell if we are being lied to or if someone is telling the truth. Here's a passage about the technique from the book by David Hawkins called Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. In this passage, Doc uh, describes the method he used uh, most often together with Susan, his partner. That method requires uh, two people and it has a list of additional requirements mentioned in this book. Those requirements will also apply to the methods I am showing in this video. So let me read the, the passage. A technique. The muscle testing response is simple yes or not yes response to a specific stimuli. It is usually done by the subject holding out an extended arm and the tester pressing down on the wrist of the extended arm using two fingers and light pressure. The tester says to the test subject, resist. And if the substance being tested is beneficial to the subject, the arm will be strong. If it is not beneficial or it has an adverse effect, the arm will go weak. The response is very quick and brief. It is important to note that the intention as well as both the tester and the one being tested must calibrate over 200 in order to obtain accurate responses. So Doc, uh, during his lectures, was mostly calibrating uh, together with Susan. So the technique he's talking about there requires uh, two people, the tester and the one uh, being tested. But in this video, I will show you three methods uh, which uh, will enable you to calibrate uh, the levels of consciousness all by yourself. As mentioned uh, by Doc, usually two people are uh, required um, to calibrate, but there are methods such as, uh, well, I call them uh, arm and bottle, the o-ring and the scissors method, which uh, enable pe person to calibrate all by uh, himself or by herself. So what are the practical applications of consciousness calibration? One, with consciousness calibration, you may learn to discern true from falsehood. This is especially useful if we have a statement which uh, someone claims to be true. With consciousness calibration, we can query the field of consciousness and ask it, not just if it is the true, 
but also the level of truth. Ascertaining the level of consciousness of almost any subject. This is especially useful because we can calibrate the level of truth of any information. For example, a book. This may sound like something abstract to a novice, but think about it for a second. Let's say I have uh, two books uh, about animal world. One is children's book and the other one is well-known and peer-reviewed book about animal world. Which one do you think will have higher level of truth in it? Next, discerning that which is pro-life from that which is anti-life. I want to give you a practical example which comes from my own experience, but the only example that comes uh, to mind in this case comes uh, from a story Doc often mentioned in his lectures. So here's the story as I remember it. While lecturing in South Korea, Doc had two seemingly identical apples and two seemingly identical jars of seaweed. He then asked people in the audience to hold in mind the first apple and observe the, their physiological response. Then hold in the mind uh, the second apple and also observe their physiological response. Most people in the audience went weak in response to the first apple and went strong in response to the second apple. Then disclosed that the first apple was treated with pesticides and the second apple was organic. He was able to repeat the same experiments with seaweed with similar results. What does it mean to calibrate? In very rudimentary terms, to calibrate consciousness is to observe how the body reacts to a stimuli or in other words, the subject held in mind which means that to learn to calibrate is to learn um, to listen and to understand how own uh, body reacts differently to truth and differently to falsehood, which is lack of truth. For that reason, I've prepared a set of pictures, statements and uh, other subjects which are designed to help you learn how your own body reacts to information, which is either true or false, integrous or non-integrous, pro-life or anti-life. To participate in this exercise, you will need something you can hold in your hand, uh, like a heavy book or a bottle of water. It doesn't have to be very heavy, uh, just heavy enough to offer resistance to your muscles. Let me demonstrate. I will play my own recording I've made earlier on, and see how my body reacts to what I say in it. See how your own body reacts to it. This is a plant. Resist. This is a car. Resist. What I've noticed is that the bottle feels heavier and is actually causing my arm to lower down when I insist that the plant is a car. This isn't something I was controlling or trying to prove anything. It is just how my body reacts to BS. Let me demonstrate further and you are welcomed to join in. Uh, right now, I am thinking about someone I love. And while I'm holding someone that I love in my mind, I really feel this. It's like the bottle is just there. It's like the arm uh, response to it is to just remain strong. It's a distinct, distinct feeling, which I suppose you uh, have to learn to discern by yourself. So the second experiment is that I will think about Hitler and see how my body will react.
what I can tell you is that thinking about Hitler definitely feels that the bottle feels um, heavier. I would encourage you to do the same experiments. What I'm holding here is a liter of water. It's about one kg or about two pounds of water. This is enough to provide resistance to my arm. It's enough for me to notice the difference. But of course, uh, you should adjust the weight of it to your own muscles. So uh, try this if you want. Pause this video for a second. Grab something uh, in your hand and extend it like so. And then try to think about someone or something uh, you love. Then uh, notice how the weight of the object in your hand feels. Does your arm remain strong? Do the same with holding in your mind someone you don't like. Then notice how it feels. Don't try to consciously prove anything. Just let your body react to it and observe your own body's reaction. So now I know how my body reacts to pleasant stimuli and how it reacts to unpleasant stimuli. These are the absolute basics, which only meant to illustrate that in fact a body will have a different physiological uh, response to truth and a different physiological response to a lack of truth. But would it react the same way to a different type of information, such as statements and other historical figures? Let's take a look at the scale of consciousness again. As we can see, unpleasantness or lack of integrity ends at level 200. This is also the level where integrity begins. Which means if I wanted to ask if Buddha was integrous, we could ask this question by formulating a statement and then testing if that statement is true or false. So let's test this. Buddha calibrates over 200 resist. Yes, and again, I feel this uh, in my arm, this response uh, of my body, which is just the arm just wants to remain strong. I'm not causing it consciously. It it's just does this on itself. By the way, because arm reacted positively to that statement, it means that Buddha was integrous. Let's now test some other subjects which are confirmed to calibrate as integrous. So above level 200 on the scale of consciousness. The purpose of this exercise is for you to learn how to recognize and how it feels different to hold an integrous information in mind versus holding non-integrous information in mind. While doing this, don't try to consciously uh, resist the, uh, the weight. Don't try to prove that uh, this is integrous uh, because I said so and hence your arm is supposed to remain strong. Just observe how your muscles uh, in your arm react to an integrous uh, information which you hold in mind. Okay, so again, don't try to prove anything. Just allow your body to respond to what you hold in mind. Next, I've prepared um, four statements. The first two statements are true. The other two statements are false. This time I won't do these exercises, but instead I am just uh, asking you, if you want, to grab something in your hand, extend it like so, and observe how the muscles in your arm react. Pause the video at any moment if you want. Ready? Okay, first one. Cat's pour calibrates over 200. Resist. Dog wagging its tail calibrates over 200. Resist. How did your arm react to the above stimuli? Did it go strong or weak? Now, Try how your body will react to statements which are not true. 
So on the scale of consciousness, calibrating below 200. Like for example, Hitler calibrates over 200. Resist. Fear calibrates over 200. Resist. How did your arm react to the above stimuli? Did it go strong or weak? Okay, so as you have probably noticed at this stage, we've used statements to ask questions. This is uh, exactly how you calibrate. You make a statement and then you check if it calibrates uh, over or below 200 on the scale of consciousness. If the statement calibrates 200 or over on the scale of consciousness, that means it is true statement. At this point, I would like to quote someone who told me that consciousness calibration wasn't meant to replace a knowledge, but instead augmented. This is a correct way to calibrate. True and falsehood is very much like light and darkness. The darkness is simply lack of light. Just like falsehood is simply lack of truth. It is not the opposite of truth. It is just absence of truth. So the truth is like the substance that exists and the falsehood is lack of that substance. One of the qualities of the body is that it can respond physiologically with strength to that substance being present. Next thing, O-ring method. As you probably figured out by now, the method with sticking out your arm while holding something heavy isn't very efficient. I've noticed that very quickly. The arm was going weaker and weaker, and it was more and more difficult to recognize what response uh, it was giving me. So I began my search for another method, which could be more suitable to calibrations. And that's how I came across the method which Doc called O-ring method. Here's how O-ring method works. I'm still posing statements, but instead of observing physiological response of my arm muscles, I am observing the reaction of my fingers. So this method is called O-ring because you make an O with your hand like this, and then you lose the other finger to try to uh, break it. What you need to learn in here is that um, this ring will actually break more easily if you think about something non-integrous. But if you are thinking about something integrous, then this ring will just be more difficult to breach. First, uh, let's test Buddha. Buddha calibrates over 200. Resist. And now let's test Hitler. Hitler calibrates over 200. Resist. Now, again, this isn't something that I'm trying to prove to you. I'm not controlling it. It's just the body momentarily uh, reacts with weakness uh, if the stimuli, if the information held in mind is non-integrous. We can test a few more subjects. Um, let's test Jesus. So Jesus calibrates over 200. Resist. Yeah, calibrates over 200, so integrous. Now let's test anger. Anger calibrates over 200. Resist. Again, not controlling it, not trying to prove anything, um, just holding it in mind, and that's how body reacts. And that's all there is to it. The ring will break uh, more easily if you are holding uh, in mind non-integrous information, or that which is anti-life, or that which is false. Uh, but it will remain stronger. Uh, it will be more difficult to break this, to breach the, the ring with your finger, if the information held in mind is integrous, pro-life, or actual truth. You can find more information about the ordering method in the PDF attached uh, uh, to one of Doc's uh, lectures available on Audible. There are actually a, probably about a hundred lectures of uh, Dr. Hawkins available on, on Audible. 
Um, they are very high quality and I, I highly recommend them. I will include a link in the video description below. Um, if you are new to Audible, you will be able to download uh, the lecture and the free PDF, which is attached uh, to that lecture. One of the requirements to get that PDF is that you would need to start 30 day trial on Audible. So next is scissors method. And for testing actual accurate numeric uh, values, I found that this is the, uh, the best method, well, so far that, that I could find. In, in the arm method, we were observing the physiological response of the arm muscles. In the O-ring method, we were observing if the ring uh, breaks uh, easily or not. With scissors method, we will be observing um, if uh, the fingers come together or not in response to a stimuli when a reasonable force is applied. So, like this. And again, this is something that um, each of you would have to learn how to recognize for yourself. There isn't a universal amount of force for everybody. It's just a reasonable force. And you would test different statements and you would eventually learn the difference. You would learn how much force to apply and you would learn how your fingers are reacting. So let's do some demonstration and some uh, testing. Let's see how it will react to thinking about Buddha. I'm thinking about Buddha right now. It remains strong. And now I will think about Hitler again. So again, this isn't something that I'm controlling. It's just how it is. This is something you would have to learn to discern for yourself. We can taste also statements. So for example, uh, a Buddha calibrates over 200 resist. And there you go. If I were gonna ask the same question about Hitler, Hitler calibrates over 200 resist. Again, this is not something I'm trying to prove to anybody. Try for yourself. It's the best thing. Experiment for yourself. So the final subject of this video is uh, learning how to calibrate and how to find the exact level of consciousness of a stimuli held in mind. Now there is actual process that I will uh, describe. So the process goes like this. Before calibrating, we need to make sure we are calibrating accordingly to the same scale. Now this is, this is obviously important because if I would measure something in inches and you would measure something in centimeters, then we would get different numeric values. The next thing is we need to qualify we have permission to calibrate. I will in here um, just read an excerpt from, uh, from another book of Dr. Hawkins. Before question in the form of a statement is presented, it is necessary to qualify uh, permission. That is state. I have permission to ask about what I am holding in mind. Yes or no yes. So if a statement is false or a substance uh, that we are about to calibrate injurious, the muscles go weak quickly in response to the command resist. This indicates the stimuli is uh, negative, untrue, anti-life, or the answer is no. The response is fast and uh, brief in duration. The body will uh, rapidly recover and return to normal muscle tension. Next thing is we need to keep the testing situation impersonal. So refrain from smiling or making personal comments. Keep the environment free of noise, background music or distractions. Also remove watches or jewelry, including necklaces. To improve concentration, close your eyes. So the next thing is, and especially important if you're calibrating first time uh, today or first time in, in a while, do a trial run. What I mean by that is that you hold in your mind stimuli, which you know is false, and test your muscle response. Then you hold in your mind a stimuli 
that you know is uh, integrous and you test your muscle response. Here are some uh, examples. The next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to demonstrate how to calibrate the exact level of consciousness of a stimuli. So we will proceed accordingly to the procedure. So first, obviously, I know that I am calibrating accordingly to uh, the consciousness scale of Dr. Hawkins, not any other one. The next thing I have to do is make sure that I have permission to calibrate. Here's how to ask permission. I have permission to ask about what I hold in mind, resist. So this statement calibrated as strong, which means I do have permission to calibrate. The next thing is that I maintain a detached state towards the result, meaning I'm not trying to prove anything and I'm okay with the response being either way. Now, asking some questions, some difficult questions, it might happen that I would hold a positionality. And I especially noticed that uh, earlier on when I started uh, calibrating. If I notice that I would prefer the answer to be this or that, then I don't calibrate. Uh, because uh, that means that the answer I would get would not be reliable. So basically I am dedicated to proof um, and no matter what it may be. What I am holding in mind calibrates over 200 resist. Over 300 resist. Over 400 resist. Over 500 resist. Over 600 resist. Over 550 resist. Over 525 resist. Over 530 resist. Over 540 resist. So it's about between 530 to 540. The next thing to know is that there will be some discrepancies. I mean, you will not always get exact numeric value that is expected. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the video. Um, this is how I learned to calibrate. I started with the general feel. I tried to learn how my body reacts to truth, how it reacts uh, to falsehood. Then I progressed to the method of, uh, called O-ring. And then later on, I learned the method called scissors method, uh, which I use uh, to calibrate the exact levels of, of consciousness.
If you want to learn more about consciousness calibration, then I would recommend the following books of Dr. David Hawkins. There's also a great PDF which comes with the audible recording of, of Dr. Hawkins. Um, this recording is usually 40, 50 bucks, but you can get it for free if you sign up for 30 day cancel anytime trial on, on Audible. I've placed a link in the video description for your convenience. I hope this video was useful. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. But if you liked it, hit the like button. Um, of course, uh, feel free to ask questions. Uh, check out the links in the description and join our Facebook group.